before I start this video, um, there's a point that I completely forgot to mention in my previous video, and that was the part where he mentions on how the majority of tweets from Gamergate is towards uh, Brianna Wu, Anita Sarkeesian, and Zoe Quinn. He says that if we're against these corrupted gaming journalists, then we shouldn't be tweeting um, about the likes of Anita Sarkeesian or Zoe Quinn. Zoe Quinn's a game developer, Anita Sarkeesian is just a stupid critic. And I pointed out that it makes sense that people are going to tweet more about Zoe Quinn and Nia Sarkis and, and Brianna Wu because these people are profiting from these corrupted gaming journalists. However, keep in mind that 3 million people have tweeted about Gamergate. And keep in mind that not every tweet from Gamergate is supportive of Gamergate. So, in other words, it could be someone who's against Gamergate who tweeted, you know, used the hashtag Gamergate and, you know, talk about Brianna Wu, Anita Sarkis, and, and etc. It doesn't negate the fact that Gamergate is all about ethics and journalism. The tweet doesn't change anything. So please do not come up with more of this unbiased bullshit, game, uh, Garrett Robinson. That being said, let's end this series once and for all. And if you earn that money, you get to choose how to spend it. But please, let's not create a false equivalence either. Games journalism is important and should be a tool to protect us, the consumers, from game companies trying to cheat us out of our money. But real life journalism can expose government or corporate atrocities and highlight massive human rights violations being perpetrated all around the world. So if you're wondering why traditional media that covers Gamergate tends to focus on the misogyny and harassment side of it? That's because misogyny and harassment create real, terrible, lasting effects in people's lives and often lead to violence. Real life violence, not pixelated blood on a screen. Congratulations, Garrett Robinson! You have officially reached full Macintosh! Hooray! You get the very honor of being called a complete freaking moron! Let me get this straight. These gaming journalists are focusing more on misogyny and um, actual violence because there is somehow a link towards violent video games, sexist video games, to real fucking life. If that's the logic, then, then violence, misogyny would be fucking off the roof. You have any idea on how many people quote unquote kill in video games? It's more than tr by the trillions, trillions of pixelated death happens in video games. And yet crime hasn't increased like fucking crazy. This is full, official Macintosh. Full Macintosh, ladies and gentlemen. Ugh. Yeah, and you wonder why you're hated on the internet. Whereas when games journalism is corrupt, the worst consequence is that you shell out $60 on a game that sucks, which, like, the New York Times doesn't care about. Now, of course, when a few hundred thousand people do that, then some big game studio makes millions of dollars on a crappy product. And that's bad. That should not happen. We should work to stop that from happening. But if you think that that is as bad or as important as somebody threatening a Montreal-style shooting and bombing massacre, and you wonder why traditional press covers the massacre, massacre threat instead of games corruption, you're living in a dream world. Oh shit, Sherlock. And maybe these <clears throat> game critics who focus on misogyny in, in video games should probably focus on misogyny in real life. Especially in third world countries where, like, let's say India, where women are treated as property. And hell, let, don't even get me started with the gays and trans in India. Because they are even worse. They have it worse compared to the women. I 
even have a gay friend in India. And I like him. You know, he seems to be, you know, smart and very kind and whatnot. And he has to struggle with the fact that he's gay. That his parents may disown him if he if they found out that he is gay. He is slowly coming out of the closet towards his friends that he can actually trust on. But no. Instead of these feminists who, you know, claim they fight for equality, what's their main concern? Misogyny in video games. This is pathetic. This is fucking low. And from the likes of you, I am no longer surprised that you will go this pathetically low. But hey, that's one of the side effects of going full Macintosh. Man? Traditional press focuses on the side of any issue that has real-world consequences, and threats of death and rape are a more important real-world consequence than corruption in games journalism. They just are. If you have even an hour a week to spend on video games, you are privileged above the wildest dreams of humanity for thousands of years. And no matter who you are, you are further privileged above a large majority of Earth's population right now. Video games are a wonderful thing. They have improved my life. They have created some of the most emotional moments in my life. I'm looking at you, Eris. They imagine new futures and put us in the shoes of ancient heroes, and with developments like the Oculus Rift, they might soon be creating, like, major lasting improvements in industries all around the world. And they are also, like movies and paintings and novels, fundamentally kind of dumber than we give them credit for. And I expect no backlash for these statements in the comments of this video. Wishful thinking, Garrett Robinson. Wishful thinking. So that's pretty much the end of my four-part series of Garrett Robinson. And holy fucking shit. This is probably one of my greatest video series ever since... Uh, what's it called? Feminazi Fridays or whatever? No, it was Feminazi Month. And, you know, I can only pray that Garrett Robinson at least have the fucking balls to at least respond to some of the criticism that I have left him via video response or comment or whatever. Until then, I am the Atheist Gamer. My third part would be... On Peter Coffin. Peace the game out. My arm's getting really tired. Ugh.